focus, and then the main rocket is the one that starts lifting it off. You're going to see here, and just uh, starting right about now, you can see they're starting the light. You can see retracting the last little thing. <laughs> You've got all of England counting down, all of the UK getting ready for launch. Here we go. There's There's the the engine sliding. They're the main boosters. Here we go. And back to the lift off. You're going to see these fall away as the vehicle starts to pull itself away from and her. We have and Tim's up. away! Big cheer. So we've got live pictures from inside the capsule, which you can see there on the split screen. So this is the live image. And you <laughs> and see the vibration you talked about. You can about see that. how hard the acceleration is seconds. by how this little floating thing is being shaken by the acceleration. Yuri is carefully looking at things. Uh, Tim Coper is writing down information and everyone is focused on their rocket ship. I saw there, you know, you've seen many of these launches, you've been involved in three of them, but I saw you there, you, you're <laughs> hanging. Do you really feel a personal connection, obviously, to these astronauts? I, it's, I, I, you're calmer inside than you are out, because out here, all I can really do is wish them well, and, and just give them the benefit of, of my heart. That's so all about, I can give. We're about four to five seconds to the main, the booster cuts off now. So, the, so what should we be looking for here now? So what we're going to see, it's a beautiful, clear day in Kazakhstan. So at a minute 45 or a minute 50, you're going to see those solid, those uh, four outer boosters will have done their job. They'll be above the air. They'll separate and actually flip away, and then it'll separate that whole first stage. You can see them starting to burn out now. You can see Tim there on the left-hand side of the picture with his checklist. On the inside, so they're busy, busy, busy. Yeah, they're just keeping track. But watch as they separate here now. You should see the little flip, flip, flip of the, of the four boosters coming off. So we're waiting for that separation. There they are. The boosters going. The spacecraft. And they're staging. Separating. There they go. Wow. See the solids coming out, or the external this boosters coming off. And that's so is, that, is, that, is, that, excuse me, is that the cover around the soils itself coming off now? Not yet. No, these are just those four boosters have separated and flipping away. Uh, and we can still see here that the engines, the, the main stage is ignited. That's, that's right. Now it's that down. central rocket burning for another few minutes as it gets them. Now that they're above the air, now they just have to get going fast enough to stay in orbit. So now it's just like a dragster with the foot to the floor, getting faster and faster. The next thing we'll see, actually, will be, or well, we won't see it, but from the, for them, they'll see, is when the covers will come off, the Soyuz capsule itself. And this is the first time that the windows are open, they get some sense of what's happening outside. Yeah, Tim's got a window just to his right, and right now it's covered by the aerodynamic shroud, but as soon as you're above the air, you don't need that, that streamlining anymore, so it splits like a big clamshell, and then there he is. There you can he see is. Out the Tim window. Peek there. That's Major there's Tim. Tim there. He's alive there's in Tim right now. Look at that. Oh, and there's that long the prod that you But as you can see, the... Tim, Tim is focused on what's happening inside. He's got six months to look out the window. So even though that space appearing out the window, he's focused as a crew member on flying his rocket. And we should say, just to get some sense of the power, they're already there's a thumbs up. up 25 a thumbs up. Right. Tim <laughs> Peek. He's giving us a wave. Hey, Hello, Tim. <laughs> These pictures coming to you live from the Soyuz capsule. I don't know if you can hear me, you're watching on television, but there was a huge cheer from all the children there when Tim gave us a wave. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? So he looks very relaxed. Yeah, it, it, and the load on them is getting heavier. Just, it's as if someone is slowly pouring more and more <laughs> sand on your body as the vehicle accelerates. Oh, we can see the limb of the earth. earth there through the window, actually. We, if you look, you can see the sky is going from light blue to dark blue so we're to black. Basically seeing the edge of space, I presume, here. That's right. We define it as 100 kilometers up, and uh, they're almost there right now. He's almost at the legal definition. He can put that in his logbook now, been to space. That's I am almost there right is now. Is he technically now an astronaut? Is there a point at which just getting up there with... Or what, is there some other tradition about to, one orbit? To become part of sort of the definition of the Association of Space Explorers, he, as soon as he's done one orbit of the world above 100 kilometers, he's, in. He, he's there. So we're here in about 30 seconds now. It's his second stage separation. 
Yeah, so the first rocket got him above the air, and now it's accelerating, but now he needs the other rocket to perfectly steer them so that they're going exactly towards the space station. And that separation will happen here shortly as they go from one rocket to the other. Yeah, we should say that we expect that we lose signal from the, from the, from the Soyuz at various points on the way out, but there it's back again. We get a real sense, we can see from his window, just see Earth disappearing and it going further and further into space. And, and they're covering hundreds of kilometers already. They're nowhere near Baikonur. They're on their way to Japan right now. It just, it's so fast, it's hard to grasp. And also, we're at, so four minutes 41, I think, second stage separation, 106 miles altitude. Yeah. Just to get some sense for the violence and speed of a rocket launch. Think of what it's like when you get on a train and after nine minutes, how far, imagine, you could be hundreds of kilometers away and hundreds of kilometers up in just nine minutes. And they've gone from naught to 8,233 miles per hour <laughs> in the time they've been doing this. Isn't journey. that amazing? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's an uncannily precise and yet unbelievable process that makes this happen. So when, when do you start to, um, to relax and think the vehicle has performed as it should? We're now in space. Is it, is it the moment you get into orbit where you can say, right, we're going to start checking the video? Well, uh, during launch, I think you saw Tim was focused and work, and then he went, this is great, and he stuck his thumb up for a second, and then he got back to focusing. It'll be the same when they get to orbit at eight, just under nine minutes. They'll focus really hard for a bit, and then he'll have a chance to sort of congratulate each other and recognize that the game has begun. In about two and a half minutes, they'll get to microgravity, what we always call zero gravity, the or the, their first orbit. And that is the point, presumably, where they'll separate the last engine, yeah. and then Soyuz will essentially unfurl into the spaceship that we know. Yeah, when you, uh, you're all bundled up like, a, like maybe a butterfly in a cocoon right now, and as soon as the engine shut off, then we deploy the big solar arrays, we, the antennas come up so we can start looking for the space station. So the vehicle sort of spreads its wings and comes alive immediately after the last rocket shuts I must off. Say, I think it's a remarkable thing. We, we, we saw Alexei Leonov earlier from those days yeah. to days when you can have live television pictures from inside the capsule. And I think we've got, uh, there's a, is there a glove coming up there? Oh no, there's a, just some switch. Actually, I think we're going to go, we're going to go back to Dallas, I believe, in Baikonur. Dallas, Dallas how's the uh, launch <laughs> from where you were? Oh, oh my goodness, I tell you what, that is how to get to the office, really. I mean, it's, un it's indescribable standing here. We are so close. And I've, I've been to a launch before, but it's, you, there's no way to explain it. It feels like it's alive. It's like some kind of monster. The noise is just immense. And also the thing that really surprised, surprised me again is just the brightness of the boosters. It's just fantastic. So it's all looking very, very good so far for Tim. He is one step closer, one step closer on his journey to the Inter space station. Yeah, we're about to. We're minute. getting pictures, still getting pictures in from around the place. So should we see, we're about a minute to uh, microgravity now, so a minute to when all the engines go off. Are we looking for this, this thing to float? We're looking you can see how smooth it is right now, because this is just pulled tight straight like a guitar string uh, under the four g's of acceleration that the crew is feeling so it's four g at the moment yeah it gets up to about four or four and a half maximum and you can just see it the, the visual reminder of where so they are we've got about 30 seconds to engine oh, cut off so should we see something on these live pictures when the engine well we off? may lose the picture just because of all the mechanical things happening the antenna that sends us the signal from the rocket is probably going to get messed up right as they separate. I think we can show you an animation of what this will look like. Obviously, we've no external shot at the moment, but we can show you that's that's so what that's it looks like at the moment. And then at some point, then that final engine, this will, section here, yeah, exactly, will stop and almost immediately detach. That's right, and uh, it has been steering them right to the final direction, and they're watching. And that's carefully. gone. Where's right our friend gone? They're in weightlessness. So we know we're in weightless because that pen or that toy, which was there, has the now, toy has floated, now away. floated up out of the field of view. And their checklists are now weightless. Their pens are floating in front of them. So this is when all the, the, the solar panels unfurl on the Soyuz, the, the, the spacecraft. But don't to miss life. it. They're in space now, Brian. They've made it <laughs> successfully in That's orbit. That's fantastic. Oh, we should have a Great cheer. Moment. Okay. They're in Tim space. Tim 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 in it. space, everybody. Come on. Big thumbs up from Yuri there. They've reached zero gravity. They're 137 miles up. 
they still need to raise themselves about another 100 miles or so to reach the orbit of the International Space Station, and that journey will take place hopefully over the next six hours or so. so yeah. But Tim has got his astronaut wings. Yes, yeah. he's got them. <laughs> That's right, he's got his astronaut wings. Now, we will know later as the day goes on whether or not they can do this journey, as we hope, over the next six hours. So the, uh, it's because the journey is not all over. So it's a dock with the International Space Station. The, uh, and so we'll be able to find a little bit more. We also can see a little bit more of Tim and this incredible journey that he's going on. Yeah. So we are going to be back at, what, about 7 o'clock on BBC yes. Two. And we'll bring you live coverage of Tim's arrival on the space station. Uh, we'll hear Tim speak from space for the first time. Chris Hadfield will be back with us. Dallas will have reaction from Tim's family. Uh, we'll be joined by the first Britain in space, Helen Sharman. And we'll be exploring Tim's new home, the International Space Station. That's all at 7 o'clock on BBC Two. But for now, from everyone here at the Space Station, it's going to be genuinely historic. And for all of us, an uplifting morning. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs>